Hello YouTube, what's up? It's Jackintosh7 and today I'm going to be giving you guys a new series on how to build a computer. Um, so this is really my first series and um, I just really decided that I'm going to be building a computer soon and I should probably do a video um, about a series on how to do it. So um, th in this video, part one, it's going to be uh, getting to know the components, so knowing the parts, the names, what they do, all that stuff choosing your parts and um, a whole lot more where do I get them from and all that stuff so um, probably wondering where do you get the parts well I like to get my parts at Newegg Micro Center um, which is a website and a store um, you have to find one near you if you go to the store you can get really really good deals on the processors now you probably have no idea what I'm talking about but just Stay tuned, you'll find out. And Amazon.com, if you don't know Amazon, what Amazon is, please, uh, there's something wrong with you? No, you just, those are really the three. So, um, the parts, there are eight main parts to building a computer, some of them you don't even need. Um, so, one is the motherboard, now I'm also going to be, I'm going to be going into detail on, on all these parts, all what they do and all that, so, um, the other one is the power supply. The next one is the case, the CPU or processor, the graphics card, RAM or memory, your hard drive or storage, and a CD or a CD and a DVD drive. So this is the motherboard. As you can see, um, it's this is really the motherboard. Now what this does is it's kind of like the brains of your computer, but it's kind of not because it only works, it will not work unless you have other parts to go with it. Um, so I don't really know how to put it, but I guess you would say compare it to, uh, how to compare it. I guess you could compare it to um, your skeleton. So like it's your skeleton, but it will not work unless you have the certain amount of items, just like you won't, you uh, can't function, your skeleton can't function without a heart or a brain or circulatory system or yeah so that's pretty much it so this is the motherboard and uh there's a lot of features in the motherboard but this as you can see this is this is really the guts if you have to get a new motherboard you might as well get a new computer um if you buy from the store um they cost roughly about um seventy dollars from the low end ones and up to two hundred and fifty dollars for pretty good ones um but I'll, I'll show you some good ones that you can get in $150 price range that are very good. Some of them even have built-in Wi-Fi these days. Um, so you can, there's a lot with them. So that's the motherboard. This is the power supply or PSU. Um, so what this does is it basically takes um, AC current, um, so the electricity that you get from an outlet. And what it does is this little machine converts it um, into computer into power that the computer can use so as you can see um, that it has a whole bunch of little wires at the end that the power supply on my left right there um, I can't show you but right there it's uh, whoops right there um, that goes to all the different parts gives you power so it gives you power to your motherboard um, supplemental PC P CPU power and all that stuff. So the one on the bottom um, is called the modular power supply and what this does is you actually only need the cables that you need. So what you can do is you can plug them in and plug them out, take them in and take them out, um, which is really cool. Um, so you won't, so that's really good for cable management. So power supplies, I would say they roughly uh, go around, um, it depends on the wattage too, there's different watts. So um, for a low-end system, you can probably get away with 350 or lower, but if you're going to be building a really, really high-end gaming computer, you're probably going to want to go with 1,000. But if you're just going with a mild gaming computer with one graphics card and an uh, i5 Ivy Bridge processor, I would say you'll only need about 550. But I'll show you how to calculate how much wattage you'd actually need, so save yourself some money. Next is RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Now what this does is basically every time you minimize an application or it resumes your spot, that's RAM. Um, now RAM comes in sticks and um, 
usually it likes to be in pairs, so you really don't want to have three sticks of RAM. Um, and what RAM, RAM goes in the RAM slots on your motherboard. I'll be showing you guys where everything goes and stuff. Um, but what this does, what but RAM is really helpful. I don't even know if your computer can start out with it. Um, it also runs in gigabyte. What how it works is uh, it each RAM stick has a different amount of gigabytes. The older ones had megabytes, and even older ones than that had kilobytes. Um, but now we're up to gigabytes. So uh, we had each a standard stick. So if you get a laptop from Best Buy, I would say it would probably come with about four gigabytes of RAM. But um, if you're going to be doing a lot of gaming, I would say get at least eight or six. Um, if you're just going to be browsing the web, get four. Um, but the more RAM, the better. If you're going to be doing um, video editing, maybe eight more. You know, RAM is getting pretty cheap now. I think you can get uh, two sticks of four. No, uh, what is it? Two eight sticks for fifty dollars, which is pretty good. Um, Corsair makes really good RAM, so does G-Skill, Crucial, so those are just some of the companies. Um, next up is hard drives. Now, hard drives are fading away. Um, it's kind of like the floppy disk now nowadays, but not really. It's it's still there. People are still going to be using these. Um, but what a hard drive is, is basically storage. So you boot off of it, uh, your operating system boots off of it, and all that stuff. But, uh... You probably know what a hard drive is. You save your files to it. Whenever you hit save, it's saving to your hard drive. Um, but nowadays they're com now they're coming out with SSDs. Those stand for solid state drives. Those are um, in the bottom left hand corner. If you can see. Um, now what those are? Those are awesome because they they're really expensive. Um, they're about a dollar per gigabyte. So if you get a 60 gig 60 gigabyte, don't laugh. But you know, 60 gigabytes, it's gonna be about 60 bucks. Um, but it is worth it. That's why people mostly use these as boot drives. They don't have them as uh, storage because you know it's not really worth storing stuff on it. So you can get a 60 gigabyte for 60 bucks and then just boot your operating system off of it. So it's that they're really really nice because they boot fast. They boot. They shut down fast. So um, yeah. And in the, the middle picture is a the inside of a um, SSD. So as you can see, um, what makes the SSD faster is it has it doesn't have spinning plates like the uh, hard drive does in the top right corner. That's a hard drive. It has spinning plates that mechanically store data onto the plates. Um, so what makes it faster is this: do it doesn't have to spin and it just saves it to a little block. It's kind of like your little flash drive. It's basically it, but it's bigger and you can store a whole computer operating system on it. Um, so the next up is CD and DVD drive. This is also fading away. Not so. This is fading away more than the hard drive. The hard drive is gonna be a while. It's gonna be here for around a long, long time. But the CD and DVD drive, it's just it's not mandatory. You don't need it anymore. Um, what I want you to do is think. How often do you use it on your the optical drive on your computer right now? Probably not a lot. Um, so what we're, what we're gonna probably do is when we're building a computer, I'm not gonna be getting a CD and DVD drive. Bleh, CD and DVD drive because I don't use it. Um, I have an external one. So what I'll do is I'll just save some money and use that to boot my uh, to use for Windows. Um, so yeah. Next up is graphics cards. Um, so graphics cards are basically um, dedicated cards that go towards video. Um, so if you're going to be a game playing games, got to get one of these. If you're going to be doing video editing, get one of these. If you're going to be browsing the web, you probably don't need it. But um, I highly recommend you do. Um, if you're not going to be playing games or doing anything crazy, then get a little cheap one uh, for like. 50 bucks. Um, the, some of the high-end ones they go up to thousand dollars, but um, they go. The price range for this is if you want a good one, mid-range is probably about 130 dollars. That's like the Nvidia GeForce um, GTX 550 Ti, I believe. That's actually a really good card, but it's pretty cheap, so it's 130 dollars. Pretty cheap. Um, so it goes from 130 dollars all the way up to thousand dollars. 
um but yeah so they do get kind of expensive um but i do highly recommend get you getting one but you know you have to think what am i going to be doing with this computer am i going to be browsing the web am i going to be doing word processing then you probably can get away without one just make sure that your um motherboard has ports for displays so like a hdmi port or a vga port or a dvi port um so let me take a breathe breath so next up we have the cpu or processor the cpu stands for central processing unit and remember how i said the motherboard is basically like your skeleton um well this is your brain because you can't function without a brain so what this does is basically tells you how to do everything and the motherboard kind of like does it so that's really the best way to put it it was kind of hard to think something like that but the two brands that are really only out there are AMD um, which is on the bottom and Intel which is on the top Intel just came out with their Ivy Bridge processors which are really really cool so um, yeah but uh, AMD I don't know any all the computers I have they have net I they didn't have AMD processors so I can't really say much about AMD but I love Intel so if you're gonna be building a Hackintosh by the way which I am you have to get a Ivy Bridge I mean an Intel processor um, another thing about this if you're looking at processors and you see a K next to it that means it's overclockable and overclocking is basically taking um, your clock speed and um, upgrading it so making it faster um, so that's really it about the uh, processor. Um, as you can see on the top right, that's basically the back of it. So you're paying about, the price range for this is I would say about 100 and uh, the cheap, like an i5, you can probably get for like $100, i3, $100, but they go all the way from $100 to $500. And then if you wanna get the Intel Extreme, that's like $1,000. So. Building your computer is not cheap, I have to say. Um, but you have to make sure you do when you're installing this that you don't bend the little gold pens because uh, they do not. The return policy does not accept bent pins. But we'll get it all into that when we're building. So the next up is the case. Um, now this is self pretty self-explanatory. It's what you put your computer in. Um, you don't have to go out and spend three uh, spend three hundred and fifty dollars on a really cool case. You can just get a $50 case like the one to the left, I believe. I think that's the um, Rosewell Half X, something like that. That's a really good case. Um, but two different things you're going to want to look out for um, is the size. So if you have a, um, I'll get all into motherboard sizes and all that in a little while. But um, a full tower case is this huge thing that's like, um, I don't know how high it is. It's pretty high, but it's bigger than your normal tower case. Um, so that's it's pretty big. Um, and then mid tower case is your average. Um, and then a mini um, ATX. You're probably not going to be looking at any of those, but I'll get into those later. Um, so that's it. So we're gonna go and look at a couple of spots to get our stuff at. I like Newegg the best, so we'll open up Newegg. And here's New Egg, full screen. And we'll go to computer hardware. And so this is where all your computer stuff will be. Um, now you can get this in a kit, a DIY combo. Um, but what we'll do is we're gonna look at motherboards because there's so many things that motherboards do, I cannot explain it all. Um, so we're gonna take this nice motherboard here and as you can see this is the motherboard now what the motherboard does is right here is your io ports now what this is it's your usb it's your uh ethernet it's your mouse it's your usb i think i said that but it's your usb it's um sound and your display this one doesn't have display so what does that mean you have to get a graphics card um, so if it does not have a display port in the back, that means you have to get a graphics card. Um, so right here, these slots right here are PCI slots. I'm going to get a better picture right here. These are PCI slots. These slots right here, um, we're all right here, PCI slots. These are PCI express. So you put little things in there, 
but right here you put your video card maybe another video card um, and if you have the new Intel Ivy Ridge processors you can have another one not another a video card I don't know if there's triple SLI I'll get into that later but you probably put a, um, a hard drive that actually goes in your um, PCI slot so over here this is where your uh, your CPU goes, um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. It's where it goes, and the fan will go with that. Make sure you have a fan. Um, and right here is for your RAM. So as you can see, this is one, two, four RAM slots. So you put your RAM in there. Right here is your 24-pin um, power connector for your um, from your power supply. Right here is your SATA port. So for what happens is you take your hard drive, you plug in you the SATA cable up on one end, take power, put it on the other end, um, all on the hard drive. And then what you do is you route the power to the uh, to the uh, power supply, and then you take the uh, the SATA and it will plug in right here. Right here, this is your um, chipset. Now, depending on what processor you use, it will either be a AMD chipset or an Intel chipset. So um, right here, this is AMD 3 Plus, so this means it's a um, AMD board. So that means you can only use AMD processors. Alrighty. So right over here, there's stuff for your case, um, sound, and all that stuff. I'm not gonna get into that because it's really different on every motherboard. So over here is a quick little demo of it. And uh, here. So we're going to go to Intel motherboards, and it's really for motherboards, I don't even have to get into that. Um, now what we'll look at is, we'll look at RAM, uh, actually, we're going to, no, we'll look at video cards because you're probably confused about that. What a video card is, I told you what it was already, but yeah. So say you like this card right here, it's a big price tag, but you're probably wondering what uh, Crossfire X means. Well. There's two companies that make the guts to the um, video card, right? So one is AMD and the other one is NVIDIA. So you're going to want to look for that. So this one is a AMD, all right? So what happens is if you want two of these cards, what you can do is you can do something called a Crossfire X. Now it's different for um, NVIDIA cards. Now this is since this is a um, AMD card, you're going to be using a Crossfire if you want two of them it, into um, the PCI slots. So yeah, that little wire that goes across, and that's really it. Um, so that way you can have see this is a th they actually have um, memory on here, but you're still going to have to get extra memory. This just powers the card. Um, so what this is, that means you have dedicated. Um, RAM so you don't have to use your own RAM that you have so if you don't get a graphics card you're gonna have to make sure your motherboard has a little um, ports for you know um, video and if not here this is a crossfire right here um, and if it doesn't what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to get a different motherboard or you're gonna have to get a graphics card you can get cheap graphics cards for like 30 bucks but they're not gonna be that good um, but what you can also do is get an Ivy Bridge processor, and um, or some I don't know if AMD some AMD processors might have this. But what you do is um, it has built-in video. So as long as you have the ports in the back of your um, uh, motherboard, then you're good. So so that's really it for graphics cards. Um, so we're gonna go back and let's see what else we can look at. Um, yeah, this. Um, so you can go over to computer hardware and then go over to uh, power supply wattage calculator. Now, once you have all your parts picked out, except for the power supply, power supply, I always rec recommend that you do your power supply last. Um, so that way you can get an idea of how many watts you use. Um, so what this does is basically calculates how much, um, how much, how many watts you're going to be using. So I'm going to be using a Intel Core i7 and the socket. So right here, this is the size, like how, what it fits. This is the socket size, um, 1155. So make sure your motherboard is the same. Um, and then I'm going to get a regular motherboard. And my graphics card is going to be, um, we'll get 
a NVIDIA. See, there's two really two different cards. There's ATI. Oh, it's ATI, not AMD. Um, and I think the one I was gonna get is right here. I think. Um, so I want eight gigabytes of RAM, but I'm gonna have two sticks of four, so that equals eight. And then I'm gonna not gonna have one like an optical drive, regular hard drive. I'm just gonna get a slow one's poop one of those drives. And then I'm gonna hit calculate. And if this it says this is all I need. Um, but say I want to upgrade to another graphics card. I want to put two hard drives in it. And um, what is that? That would be eight. That would be. 16 gigs of RAM, so calculate 522. But the um, the graphics card takes up a lot, uses a lot of power. So yeah, I'll get rid of that, and it will drop significant significantly. Wow, I said that really wrong. But yeah, so 522 watts if I want to upgrade. So I probably should just get around 550 watts. Um, you don't want to get say it says 501 watts. Don't go and just get a 500 watt. Get a 520 watt if it's gonna if it's 501. Um, it's 520. Say it's 550, and you're like, oh, it's 550. They make 550 uh, uh, power supplies. Um, well, don't get that exact because it will not work. Like it will work, but you're not gonna have enough power. And another thing, read the reviews, get the ratings. Uh, oopsie. You want to read the review you have to read the reviews if you don't read the reviews it's so you can the most important thing is the motherboard it's not going to be the reviews are not going to be perfect um see you can go sort by best rating and let it load and as you can see it's got pretty good ratings but this is a really small motherboard see mini itx so find out all the sizes by just figuring it out um but it goes mini itx itx uh, micro ATX, then regular ATX, and then full ATX, or something like that. So you're probably gonna have to get a full size one. And as you can see, five stars, um, well, new eggs case five eggs. But um, you're gonna have to do your research. Um, now another thing I have to say is you gotta read. Um, like you don't. How do you know if this motherboard is compatible with your graphics card? Well, you gotta read. What PCI slot does this one? How, what type of PCI slots does this take? What speed does it go? Um, how much RAM does this take? What RAM does this take? Um, so those are just some examples. Um, so so stuff that you're also going to need um, are um, like a monitor, because uh, you're not building a laptop. You can't really build a laptop from scratch. Um, so you're gonna need a monitor. You're gonna need um, a whole bunch of like all the peripherals, like a mouse, a keyboard, um, and all that. Now, if you're wanting to get Wi-Fi, you can get a Wi-Fi card. Um, so I think right here, network adapter. Well, this isn't it, but this will just give you an extra uh, little plug. But yeah, I would definitely check this out. And if you are getting a Intel Ivy Bridge processor or any other Intel processor, please go to Micro Center. They have awesome deals on processors. Well, right here, we have, um, let's see here, I want an i5. And as you can see right here, this is the new motherboard. It is um, $190. You're probably like, that's a lot of money. That's really, really cheap. It says, compared to Newegg, you're probably like, yeah, well, you shouldn't believe this stuff. But if you do go to Newegg, this is significantly, bleh, I cannot say that word, um, cheaper than Newegg. Um, check it out yourself, I swear. This, if you're going to have to get it processed or get it here, and buy your parts at one time. I got my case because um, it was on sale and I regret it. So buy your uh, parts at the same time. That way, if one of them doesn't work, that way you can return it. Because say you get a motherboard and then you get all your parts over a couple months. Um, and then you start up your system and it doesn't boot. You're like, why is not why isn't booting? Well, you find out why it's your motherboard, but you can't return it through Newegg's return policy. So you're gonna have to go through the motherboard's company's policy, which is probably 
this really long, stupid thing that you have to wait um, a month to get a new motherboard, and you have to pay for shipping and all that stuff to ship your motherboard back to see if they messed up the board during process, like during manufacturing and stuff. So those are just things to keep in mind. But that's really it for this part in the video. Um, I should be coming out with the other parts pretty soon. The next one will probably be building itself. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask me. Um, please, please feel free to ask me. Um, don't worry about it. It's fine. And um, what was I going to say? If you want to build a computer, and but you really don't want to build it, you just want to have the custom specs, um, then give me uh, send me a message. I can probably do it for you. Um, depends on how things are going, but we'll see. So, if you have any questions, um, I will also be posting a how to choose your parts for a Hackintosh video. Um, so that will be very useful for those of you who are building a Hackintosh. So if you are building a Hackintosh, I only have one video on my channel, which is how to make a flash Unibeast flash drive. But you know, just go look at my channel, give me suggestions, tell me what you want to see, and I will provide it. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, so don't forget rate, comment, subscribe, and send me those messages so I know what you guys want. And uh, these videos should be coming out within a couple weeks, um, max a couple months. Um, still coming up money for my computer, but I'm getting a whole bunch of old computers, so I can probably play around with those and take them apart and show you all about them and all that cool stuff. So um, yeah, see you next time.